Hi, this is a quick video to show off the MicroSplat Terrain Blending Module. Uh, if you purchase this module, it adds a bunch of features for uh, blending with the terrain. And I've worked really hard to try to make this workflow uh, really, really simple for people uh, while still getting a really uh, pleasant result and working with all of the shader features uh, of MicroSplat. Um, so, I have a terrain set up here. I have a bunch of uh, sort of random objects on it, and we're going to blend these with the terrain and uh, hopefully that will show you how it works. So the first thing I'm going to do is select my template material uh, on my terrain here and uh, this will open the Microsplat shader uh, editor. The top section we have the shader generator and we are going to click on the terrain blending feature. So once we turn this on uh, Microsplat is going to generate some custom uh, shaders and materials that the system uses um, and it'll make it very easy for us to uh, do this. Um, so the second thing we're going to do is we're going to select our terrain and uh, what we're going to do is you can see here it says the blending data is not present please generate and so then you just click the generate terrain blending data button and what this does is it goes over the terrain and uh, creates a bunch of information uh, which on this terrain takes about two megs of memory uh, to help perform that uh, blend in real time. If you edit your terrain's height you will have to uh, click the update button and if you decide you don't want terrain uh, blending you probably want to hit the clear button to uh, save that memory. So now that we're all set up let's go ahead and blend some objects. So I'm going to select this object here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the Microsplat uh, blendable object component to it. Uh, and that's basically all we have to do. Uh, we're going to turn up the distance a little bit and so I've set a distance of 10 and so you can see here that it is now blending the uh, terrain here uh, right into this object. It's using the terrain shader. And we can see that the textures line up and even the lighting lines up for the most part. Uh, there is some very, very minor seams that you can see in some cases. I believe this comes from some of the uh, vertex-based stuff. Uh, I've been working to track it down. Uh, but for the most part, it looks pretty seamless. Um, I'm using triplanar texturing in this case, which can really help um, because if you're not using triplanar, uh, then you are using a top-down projection, uh, which can sometimes look bad on things which are vertical surfaces. So um, that's how easy it is. Let's talk about some of the parameters here. Uh, each object actually gets um, its own set of parameters, and basically there's the blend distance. There's the blend contrast, which basically uh, is like the blend contrast on your terrain. So if you turn that uh, up, you're going to get something that's much more height map based. And you turn it down, you're going to get something that's much softer and blurrier. And then you have, uh, and I'm going to turn this up a little bit for this, uh, the blend curve. And what this does is it moves the midpoint of the blend. And so you can see that that acts as a way to sort of widen and tighten up the blend uh, it also does control the position because you're, you're moving that midpoint. Uh, but when you have this contrast particularly high, it can help um, sort of contrast the areas of the height map as well. Um, so yeah, so those are the basic controls. Um, and that's all you have to do. And this all works with multi-object editing. Uh, so for instance, we could select a bunch of these objects, like the rock here, this cube, this other idol. Let's just add that component to all of them, and we'll set the distance to 10 on all of them. And now what you can see is that they are all blending with the terrain. Um, and there's actually some really cool tricks you can do with this. So here I have this rock, um, and you can see now it's blending with the terrain there. Um, if I deselect it so we don't see the orange, you can see the blend looks pretty, pretty flawless. Um, but we can actually play with both the distance and the contrast on this. If I turn up the contrast quite a bit, that's going to uh, make it more of a height map blend, so it's a little, little tighter. And I can play with the curve and get this texture to kind of creep out over this object. And so here at size 15, you can see it's even creeping onto the top of this with the grass texture and stuff that's below it. And uh, playing with that curve, we can sort of control you know, how much of that appears and where it appears, and you'll see that the uh, rocks appear before the grass um, because again we're using that height map data and so you can get some really nice blends between your objects and your train uh, this way and again uh, this just works it doesn't require special shaders for your objects um, it does have a few restrictions which I'll talk about in a second 
Uh, but you can see here, I'm just blending this. I'm just using a cube, straight up cube with the standard default, um, you know, shader on. So you don't need to map your uh, regular objects with traditional shaders. I mean, sorry, with special shaders or anything like that that may not have the features you want. Um, you can use whatever shaders you want. Um, so there are a few restrictions um, that should be talked about. Uh, if you have multiple sub-objects in your material. Now, if you're not familiar with what a sub-object sub is, is sometimes when you export, uh, say you make a, a house in, um, you know, Maya or something, and you export it into, uh, into Unity. Uh, if that house has a bunch of different materials on it, uh, Unity will sometimes create uh, what's called sub-objects, which are sub-meshes, which are basically like I have three meshes in this one FBX file that have three different materials, and what you'll see here is that you have three materials uh, on your uh, object. Um, if you uh, try to use this on that, it'll only blend with the first material. Uh, that is because Unity, for some reason, will not apply a second set of materials to uh, multiple objects that way. Um, there's a possibility that I could do some pretty complex stuff to get around this, uh, but at least initially that doesn't seem like a big restriction. A lot of what people are going to be blending with are fairly simple objects like rocks and things like that. Um, but we can talk about that on the forum if people think that's um, something they really would like to see fixed. Uh, it may have a cost to fixing it, so um, I'm not going to go down that avenue until uh, it's worth going down. Um, so that's the main restriction uh, that you have to think about. Um, it's not too bad of a restriction, especially because the feature is so easy to use. Uh, there's another thing here, which is that we are using multiple materials, which means we're drawing these objects multiple times, once for each material. Um, this made the workflow really easy. I could have done this all in one shader, but then you would have to use my very specific shader uh, for your objects, which didn't seem uh, as flexible. So I've, went, I've gone for this workflow. But let's say you're making a really large, you know, mountain, and you're mashing it into your terrain, and this thing is just, you know, massive, right? Like it's the size of this whole terrain. Uh, drawing that object twice might be too expensive. Um, so what you probably want to do in that case is basically just cut the section of the object that you want to blend, and uh, put that, uh, put the blending object only on that object and not on the rest of it, and that'll save you some performance. However, on smaller objects like this, it's probably not uh, worth worrying about. Um, so yeah, that's basically the feature. Um, I think it came out pretty great, um, and I'm really interested to see what people do with it. And uh, yeah, great. Thanks a lot.